Hello everybody, this is part three of my series on the Canadian military history. Um, this part will be talking about some of the other battles of World War Two. Uh, well, for, sorry, the First World War. Um, it had Somme, it had Passchendaele, the first of Passchendaele, uh, the, the first battle of Ips. Um, and there's but I mean, there's another area where, where Can Canadians shined. It was the the first battle of Ips in well, the Battle of Ips in 1915, I believe, uh, when the Germans first used mustard gas. Most of the other nations on either flank, either of the Canadian flanks, retreated when the gas came. Um, Canadians were there's another form of their ingenuity. We'll talk about it a little bit later, um, but they used during soaked work rags uh, to cover to protect their as defense against the mustard gas threat um, and they held the line fought off the German counter attacks attacks just another area where it showed their courage their tenacity their bravery and their ingenuity all at the same time and that's the one that best stories I can think of to mention with the first world war as well other than Vimy Ridge which we had a good five minutes or a few minutes on Vimy actually before or after my little talk with Richard Noland from Afghanistan. Uh, my personal thing with Richard Noland. Uh, yeah, uh, well, in World War II, First World War, we had the Canadians fought a lot of different areas Mons, uh, the Somme, Passchendaele, Ips, a few other places. Uh, but I think Canada's biggest one, other than Vimy, would be the Somme and Bastogne. Probably the two bloodiest battles for Canadians. Um, so I mean, it's a very difficult topic to talk about when it's military history, when a lot of Canadian soldiers were killed in action. A lot of them were missing. A lot of them are still missing. Their families never knew what happened to their fathers or their sons, or their brothers. Um, so I mean, part part of the reason for the series of uh, military history, Canadian military history, is to honor their memories. We don't know their names; they're unknown, especially unknown soldiers. Um, I mean, if you're in Ottawa, I'd say I recommend going to the all the war museum and finding out this information or visiting the tomb of the unknown soldier. Um, so yeah, uh, okay. Uh, basically, going moving on through to World War One. Between the between two wars, actually, we have uh, April twenty fourth, nineteen twenty four, to be exact. Uh, it's a day with for the Air Force. That's a big day in the Air Force. Um, we actually we're almost uh, we're just about there. Uh, almost hundred, about another fifteen years from the hundred anniversary of this event in, in military history. Uh, it's birth of the Air Force. So, I mean, you know, the Canadian Force has been around since 1924, which is pretty good. April t April 24th, 1924, actually. Uh, they were, it was a f made official at Camp Borden, Ontario. Um, I've been in some of these old hangars at Camp Borden. It's, the history in those buildings is amazing. Uh, they don't even something dated back to the First World War. Being a building dated back all the way to that point where men trained from for go to war. Uh from in World War Two anyways. So it's pretty amazing. Um Borden's a very amazing facility. It's a bigger than most people think. I think it's a small base. It's not really there's a lot of training areas in that base that people don't see. Um so yeah. I mean if so moving on to World War Two, the technology we had. We had Spitfire Hurricane of course, the Lancaster. Uh, another aircraft that we kind of used. Um, I don't remember, I'm not going to mention all of them. I'm going to mention the ones everybody knows: Spitfire, Hurricane, Lancaster, and Halifaxes. And but we didn't really have those before we going to World War Two. Uh, we basically had hurricanes. I think we had some hurricanes and Spitfires, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken, before the war. Uh, but during the war, we had a lot of, uh, especially the Battle of Britain in 1939. With the evacuation of Dunkirk in 1940, 
1939, September 39, I believe. Uh, it was pretty crazy at that point. So, I mean, it's, you have to always think, what was really going through their minds at the time? Uh, these members and forces going through to the heads of the time during the evacuation of Dunkirk. Uh, there's a lot of documentaries out there on that. Um, I mean, I know there's a documentary actually here on YouTube from Jeremy Clarkson did it on uh, St. Nazaire, which Second World War, we're talking about Second World War, but I mean, it's, I find that interesting. I mean, there's a guy who hosts a car show on in, on BBC, BBC Two, uh, and he's so fascinated by different topics like cars, history. He's not a person you think is being enjoying history, uh, but he makes it so he's so enthused by the topic Saint Nazaire. Uh, I might talk a little bit about that. Uh, might get that. I might find a way to get the video. Um, the some of it for you, uh, or I'm gonna link it, put a link to the videos for you, there uh, on in the comp in the little information section. But it's World War Two as Canadian for Canadians. The three biggest moments I initially think of right off the top of my head that are moments for Canada is Diap, Hong Kong. And D Day. Those are probably the most three most important events for World War Two that come right to mind, right off the top of my head, right off the bat. Uh, we were there. We we actually served with in Baston with the U.S. Hunter with the Air with the Airborne Divisions. We actually an engineering company, or an an engineering battalion. There, sorry. Um, that was there during the siege of Baston. Um, but yeah, it's our military does a lot more than they get credit for. Uh, basically, I'm actually going to switch back to World War One. Uh, the equipment in World War One. Um, I forgot to mention this when I was talking about the World First World War. Uh, but the Ross rifles, uh, Canadians had initiated the Ross rifle during the early parts, early stages of the World War, the First World War, the Great War. Um, but they were there's a slight little issue with them. Um, they were prone, very prone to being jamming. They were prone to jam in battle. Not a great rifle. Not a great thing to have when you're in bat in heat of battle. When you, your life your life depends on your rifle, your tool. Uh, what a lot of our Canadian soldiers did, what a lot of the troops did, was uh, they took the Lee Enfields, the SMLEs from the off British dead British soldiers. Um, to use. After a while, the Canadian government said, yeah, "Okay, let's equip our, equip the boys with the Lee Enfields." Because uh, the Ross rifle is more suited for sport shooting, or hunting, and sniper as a sn or a sniper rifle, but not as a frontline infantry weapon. But I mean, it's really difficult to say. A lot of the a lot of the problems these days going on about what to, what we can do. And the World War Two, a lot of different opi opinions on battles, um, on what happened in World War Two and World War One, to be the same way. We don't really know exactly. We have the oral history. A lot of the veterans. We're lucky. The World War Two veterans, some of them are still around. Uh, in Toronto, where I live, I mean, we have Sunnybrook Veterans Hospital, the Veterans Hospital in Toronto. We can visit. Um, I might be thinking about volunteering there, get information, talk to some of these guys to cheer them up a little bit. Um, but we have, there's a lot of history and a lot of things to learn about both the First and Second World War. Uh, Dieppe, like I said, Dieppe D Day in Hong Kong are probably the top three that come to anybody's mind. Is D Day and Dieppe. They're, those two go hand in hand with each other. I mean, it's something that a lot of people don't realize. Uh, so I mean, yeah. Well, uh, we are. This is the end of the third part three um, of the topic. We'll continue on what we're talking about about the Second World War, uh, and hope you guys enjoy join the series. Thank you. Have yourselves a good night.